In this video, we'll work through an example where we find the intervals where a function is increasing and decreasing. So the key here is that what we need to do is look at the derivative and find the critical values for this function, because those are the places where the function might change from increasing to decreasing, or from decreasing to increasing. So our first step here, step number one, is to find the critical values. Now what's a critical value? That means that f prime of x equals zero, or f prime of x is undefined. And most of the time, you're only going to be worried about f prime of x equaling zero, but every once in a while, you'll have to worry about the derivative being undefined. So before we can think about that, we need to find a formula for our derivative. So our function is 3x to the fourth plus 16x cubed plus 24x squared plus 50. So we use our derivative rules to find the derivative, which is going to be 3 times 4x cubed plus 16 times 3x squared plus 24 times 2x, and then the derivative of 50 is zero. Now we have to simplify this derivative because we have to understand when it equals zero and when it's undefined. So when we simplify, we get 12x cubed plus 48x squared plus 48x. Now, let's think about whether this could be ever undefined. When we think about our derivative being undefined, we're worried about dividing by zero or taking the square root of a negative number, those sorts of things. But because we don't have any fractions in our derivative, we don't have any possibility of dividing by zero. Because we don't have any square roots, we don't have the possibility of taking the square root of a negative. So there's no worry about this ever being undefined. This is never going to be undefined. But it might equal zero. And to find out when it equals zero, we're going to set it equal to zero and solve. So 12x cubed plus 48x squared plus 48x equals zero. Because this is a polynomial equation, we think we might try to so uh, solve this by factoring. We can start by factoring out a 12x. When we factor out 12x, we get x squared plus 4x plus 4. And we can factor this further because x squared plus 4x plus 4 factors as x plus 2 times x plus 2. That gives us several solutions. 12x equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0. If 12x equals 0, divide both sides by 12, we get x equals 0. If x plus 2 equals 0, subtract 2 from both sides, we get x equals negative 2. And then again, we get x equals negative 2. So we can ignore the duplicate. We don't need to worry about the fact that we got negative 2 twice. Our critical values are 0 and negative 2. So step 2, then, is to create a sine diagram. We're going to start our sine diagram by drawing a number line. And on our number line, we're going to plot all of the critical values that we found. We found two critical values, negative 2 and 0. And so we're going to draw them on our number line in the order that they would normally appear. And now what we're interested in is the sine of f prime in between these critical values. We've got three regions on our number line. The numbers that are less than negative 2, the numbers that are between negative 2 and 0, and the numbers that are greater than 0. And on those three sub-intervals, the sine of f prime is going to be consistent. The only place the sine of f prime, the positive or negative sign, could change is at one of these two critical values. So what we're going to do is choose a value of x in each of these sub-intervals and plug that into the derivative to test to see if the derivative is positive or negative on that sub-interval. So in each of these places, we're going to plug a number into f prime. So what's less than negative 2? Well, any number less than negative 2 will work, but let's pick negative 3. If you decided you wanted to pick negative 4 or negative 5, that's totally fine. But I decided I'm going to pick negative 3. So I'm going to plug negative 3 into my derivative, which means I'm going to take my derivative formula, which is here, and I'm going to plug negative 3 into that. So I get 12 times negative 3 cubed plus 48 times negative 3 squared plus 48 times negative 3. I break out my calculator, and plug all that stuff in, and what I end up with is negative 36. Now what's important about negative 36 there isn't so much the 36 part, it's the negative part. Because what that tells me is that f prime is negative for all values of x less than negative 2. And then at negative 2, my f prime is 0. Between negative 2 and 0, now I have to pick a new x value, an x value that's between negative 2 and 0. How about negative 1? 
So I'm going to plug negative 1 into my derivative. Again, that means 12 times negative 1 cubed plus 48 times negative 1 squared plus 48 times negative 1. I work all that out, and I get negative 12. So that means that my function, my f prime, is negative from negative 2 all the way up to 0. And then it's 0 again at x equals 0. So what this shows us is that at this critical value, at x equals negative 2, my f prime could have changed sign. It could have changed from negative to positive, but it didn't. It stayed negative. So maybe it changes sign again at x equals 0. At this second critical value, again we have an opportunity, a place where my f prime might change sign. Does it change sign there? I don't know yet. To test it, I've got to pick an x value that's greater than 0 and plug it into my f prime. How about f prime of 2? So I'm plugging that into my f prime, so I get 12 times 2 cubed plus 48 times 2 squared plus 48 times 2. I work all that out, and I get 384. And again, what's important about that 384 is that it's positive. So that means that, in fact, my f prime did change sign at x equals 0. It changed from negative to positive. So that means that in this interval, from negative infinity to negative 2, my function f, my original function, is decreasing. From negative 2 up to 0, my original function, f, is decreasing still. And then on this interval, from 0 up to positive infinity, my function f is increasing. So now I'm ready to answer the question. The question said, on which intervals is the function increasing and decreasing? Well, f of x is increasing on the interval from 0 to positive infinity. And then f of x is decreasing on two intervals, from negative infinity up to negative 2, and from negative 2 up to 0. And whenever we have multiple intervals that we want to join together, we put the union symbol in between those. And that looks like a little u. I messed it up there. I can fix it. It's a little u shape in between those two intervals. So that would be our final answer here.